Hey guys, it's Kat and I am back today uh, to do a first impressions look using the Victoria Beckham Beauty eye products. So um, I ordered these with Hayley a couple of weeks ago. I only picked it up from Hayley last week, I think a week ago, and I'm finally putting it on my face. So this is the final look that I've created. It's a bit smoky, it's a bit grungy, made some mistakes, but it is what it is. But um, I thought it would be fun to try these products for the first time and let you know what I think about them. Before I get onto the look, I just thought I'd show you how things arrived. So there is the card um, with a printed note. It all came in a little bag, which was really sort of a nice touch. So I picked one of each of the eye products. Um, when I did order, they didn't have the lip products uh, released at the time. I don't know if I would have bought them, but whatever. Um, so I got one of the crystal infused eyeshadows. So the shade that I got was mink. I got the smoky eye brick. So this is the eyeshadow quad. The shade that I got is tweed and I got an eyeliner. So this is the satin Kajal liner and the shade that I got was Bordeaux and that came with a little sharpener too. So with the smoky eye brick, the packaging is beautiful. It's very, very luxe. It's very heavy. It's made out of metal and like, I don't know, glass, I guess, or something. Um, it's very luxe. It feels like jewelry or a jewelry box or something really sort of high end, which is great. Cause that, if you're spending 54 US dollars on a quad, you want it to feel really, really luxe. Now these do come in four shades. This is the one that I got. So I decided to pick this shade. I mainly wanted a brown palette, but um, the sort of nude brown palette was too nude for me. I wanted something more mid tones So I went with tweed that had uh, two browns and like a purple and a red. The lid lusters are like pressed pigments in a little pot. They come in four shades and they're 36 US dollars. So if you open it up, um, it's got a little stopper. And um, so it's essentially pressed loose pigment. My shade is mink. This is a lot more cool toned than it appears on the website. So I'm a little bit disappointed in the shade. I'll talk more about that at the end. Um, but this is a glass container with a plastic lid. So it doesn't feel as luxe as the eyeshadow palette. And I think for 36 US dollars, it should probably feel a little bit more luxe and look more like the swatch uh, on the website but um, it, that's, that's what it is. The Satin Kajal liner is a very big liner. So it does have a sort of, uh, on one end it's got a smudger and on the other end it's of course the pencil. So it is um, a sharpenable pencil. It does come with a sharpener. Now this comes in three shades and it's 26 US dollars. This just sort of feels like a normal pencil. Um, the, there's nothing super luxe about it. It does have a nice shiny cap that feels quite loose. So I think this is probably the worst packaging, but it's also the most simplest product. So how do you really make eyeliners super luxe? But uh, that's that. And let's get on to me applying the product so you can see how they actually work. All right, so let's start with the primer. I've just got my Bare Minerals Gen Nude Primer, which is sort of my Project Pan Primer. So I'm just using it to use it up. And then using any eyeshadow brush that I don't like to use with eyeshadow. So for example, this is a ColourPop F11. It's like a dual fiber one that I just don't use. So um, yeah, I just sort of use these ones for blending out primer. So I'm going to go in with the eyeshadow palette first. This is very luxe. It feels like a nice little jewelry box or something really fancy. Um, I think I might set the crease a little bit with this shade. I do sort of want to use them all. So you, we see the colors here. So this is the light brown, this is the dark brown, the purple and the red. So if I mention those, that's what I'm going into. But I do want to try to use them all as a base for that sort of sparkly eyeshadow. So with an Esim G34 brush, this is just a big fluffy brush. I'm going in, oh, it's very soft to pick up. You can see like there's a bit of uh, kick up in the pan and there's a lot of product on the brush. Just tapped a little bit of that off and I'm going into the crease. Oh, this is a nice eyeshadow. Okay, so it's a very expensive eyeshadow, but it does, okay, it applies pretty well. It's directly onto the primer. So you can see there's a little bit of sticking uh, where I didn't sort of apply it super evenly, but otherwise it's sort of blending out pretty nicely just directly on a primer and it's got a nice amount of color. So if I grab just a tiny bit more from the powder that I've already picked up in the pan, um, you can sort of correct that uh, skipping as you can see. If you hear noises in the background, it's a cat's running around like crazy, um, but you can build up that pigmentation. This is actually a really beautiful, it's a basic brown but it's one of those really flattering, nice browns. This is actually going on a bit darker than I was sort of expecting, but I guess you can sort of 
use less like I'm doing here and put a soft amount on or build it up. So you do have the versatility, but it is a nice blendable product. And the finish isn't entirely matte. It's got a bit of a sheen to it in the pan, but I can't see it on the eye. I feel like that's just to help with the blendability. Often a little bit of shimmer helps it blend. I actually prefer it applied a bit softer than I did there. I match it, so I'm just building that up. With a smaller, fluffier brush, so this is the Morphe M506, I'm going in with the same brown. I'm just putting a little bit on the inner corner of the eye. There's the cats again. Whoa. Off they go. So the reason I'm doing this is because I don't really have any light shades to put in there. Um, and I don't want to put anything darker than what I've already got on the eye. So I'm just using this to sort of uh, anchor the look a little bit. With the same brush and the same color, I'm just doing the same for the bottom lash line. All right, so this is predominantly more of a matte look. Like there are some shimmery parts to this, but it looks more like a matte sort of eye and it's quite uh, mid-toned or dark. So I'm sort of figuring out what I'm supposed to do with this, but I'm going in with a fancier brush. This is the Sonia G Worker 3 brush and I'm using that red. So it picks up very, very nicely. And I just want to put that on the sort of main part of the mobile lid. So it's definitely more red, but it's not like super, super bright. So you can see the red on it, which is nice, but it's not all of a sudden taking this into a really bright area. It's still a smoky red. So hopefully you can see with this shadow that it did apply pretty uh, nicely and evenly. It's not super, super bold. All right, back to that mini sort of Morphe fluffy brush. And I've just picked up the purple shade and I'm running it on my lower lash line, just in the outer corner to smoke it up. This is a beautiful color. Um, I think it might be a little bit patchier to apply than the other shades, but it's definitely a nice addition to this palette because I love these sort of purples to smoke up a look. I sort of feel like as I'm putting on the purple, it's lifting the red, which is a bit annoying, but um, we'll see if we can sort of make that work a bit better. I think that's applied pretty nicely. Once again, not super bold, but very smoky. I'm just going over just the outer portion where I met the purple with the red, just with a little bit more red, just to see how it blends. It does blend better when you sort of blend the lighter shade over the darker shade uh, just adds a little bit more of that red back. So not a super exciting look yet, but I do want to add that shimmer on and I haven't used the dark brown, but I want to use that maybe after I use a shimmer. So I'm just going in with a clean brush and just sort of blending that. I always find that mattes are a little bit less forgiving when it comes to patchiness. You can really see the sort of patchiness if you don't blend them properly, whereas shimmers are a little bit more forgiving. So uh, I'm just going to do a bit of blending. So far, I think the part that I like the most of this look is actually the smoky purple on the lower lash line going into the outer corner. I think it gives like a really nice grungy sort of smoky vibe. The color's really pretty um, and you could wear it with cool and warm looks. And um, I think also because I didn't put any primer on my lower lash line, um, I didn't put too much on, but it did stick pretty well. All right, time for the lid luster in the shade Mink. So I am actually gonna swatch this. I haven't swatched this yet. It's really, ooh, it's much, more cool tone than I expected. So it's brown with like a cool shift to it. So there you go, it's very pigmented and beautiful. I sort of want to dot that on the um, middle of the lid. So this is just an old crown brush with uh, no name on it, but you can see how sort of wet that is because it is a pressed pigment. And what I mean by that is uh, you need to use the lid to actually press it into place. When I did get this, it had a crack in it, it was a little bit broken. So I just pressed it down with the lid and it holds it into place, but you do pick up a lot of product because it's not like a really firmly pressed product, like an eyeshadow. So I'm just gonna put that maybe here. Okay, yeah, you can definitely feel that it's quite wet. The more you pick up, the more it feels wet. And I thought this was gonna go a bit better with the red, but it doesn't really seem to be. It's a lot cooler toned than what I was expecting. I might need to adjust my eyeshadow situation. So there is such a thing as picking up too much because you can sort of accidentally gouge into the pot. Um, so just be careful. To get a really intense effect, you could apply this with your fingers as well, or just over a glitter glue, but it does have a nice amount of pigment that it would just um, apply nicely with a brush. And this is a really cheap brush. 
So hopefully you can see the gouge that I accidentally made in it. So I'm just gonna put that lid, that sort of presser back in and you can kind of squeeze it down, hold it in there and just put the lid back on. So I do think that applied quite nicely and it give, gives a really pretty effect, but I don't really love it with the red. It just looks a bit much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with some of that dark brown on that same little crown brush and I'm just going to cover the red on the lid. So this is a dark brown that I haven't used yet just to sort of transition that shimmer to a matte. So I've just wiped off that brush and I'm going with the red again, but I'm putting a bit of the red on the lower lash line instead. So that's where I'm now focusing the red. A little bit more purple, building up that purple in the outer corner, doing some blendy action. All right, so that looks like a right mess. I'm gonna go and tidy up uh, the lower lash line a little bit with concealer. I've got a little bit of fallout from that shimmer as well. So I'm just gonna tidy up a bit and be back. All right, so we've got a bit of a grungy mess going on and I don't think any eyeshadow is gonna fix this, but um, I do wanna go in with the liner. So this is the liner in Bordeaux, which is a nice, beautiful sort of burgundy color. I definitely wanna put this on the waterline and the lower lash line and sort of blend it out a little bit to get more red because it's sort of just muddied into sort of brownie kind of warm tones, but I'm debating about whether or not I put this on my uh, top lid as well. So I don't really like pencil liner on the top lid. I don't think it gives the effect that I usually go for. So this might just be on the lower lash line. All right, so it's super, super pigmented. Like that's just lightly touching it and um, it goes on like a dream. It's beautiful. One thing I love about this as well is this red is actually pretty flattering. I have another sort of burgundy liner from Marc Jacobs and I feel like it makes me look like my eyes are bleeding. Whereas I feel like this is dark enough and sort of berry enough that it works. I'm just gonna run a little bit of that on the lower lash line as well. So just sort of dotting it along. And of course you can take the smudger on the end, but I like having something that I can clean easily. So I'm going in with this little firm brush again, and I'm just sort of blending that color out. I think this is gorgeous. Okay, I actually think my favorite part of what I've used so far is probably this liner, if it lasts, because it is very, very pretty. Super creamy and pigmented, blends a dream. Look at it, it's just blending itself almost. It's really, really pretty. All right, I've decided I'm not gonna do any top liner. I'm just gonna go curl my lashes, do some mascara and maybe put some half lashes on, but I wanna put a little bit more of that sparkle just on with my finger um, because I feel like the blending, we've lost a little bit of it. I don't want too much on because it's a very, very dark color, but I just want a little bit of sparkle. Add a bit of dimension to this really sort of flat look. So it is very dark, but at least there's a bit of twinkle going on to just to brighten it a little bit. All right, we're back with the finished look. So I curled my lashes. I put a bit of MAC, um, whatever this mascara is. What is it? False Lashes Mascara. It's not a very bold mascara. But I also put some Model Rock half lashes. So I pretty much take a lash, cut it in half, and just put on the outer corner. So that's what I've done. I've put them on a bit wonky, but it is what it is. But uh, you can see it's a very smoky look. All right, so I think from afar, this is actually a lot prettier. I did actually have a darker lip on, um, but I toned it down by putting a Jouer uh, lip cream on because I just thought dark and dark's not gonna be great. But I do like this look. I think it did sort of come together at the end. I think what really changed it was adding a bit more shimmer on the lid and also adding that um, burgundy liner. I think that liner is probably my favorite thing out of the three items I tried. So even though this is the first impressions, I do have some thoughts on this. Um, so firstly, let's talk about um, the eyeshadow palette. This is a very, very expensive palette. And I think um, the price definitely goes to the packaging, which I believe is reusable. This is like a jewelry box or like a really fancy sort of like card carrier or like cigarette box back, cigarette like clasp thing back in the day. It's very, very fancy and you can feel it's very weighty and that's where your money's going. Uh, it does have a very nice quality mirror in there as well, which is really beautiful. The shades I do like, I think overall they are, 
destined to make a very dark look unless you predominantly use this shade. Um, I did pick one of the darker palettes because I feel like the balance of the other palettes, um, there was firstly a blue palette, which I wasn't going to use much. There was sort of like um, a warm toned nude, which had two sort of medium toned browns, sort of like these browns, but then like larger pans of cream. I don't really use cream besides setting my base, so I thought that was a bit of a waste. And then there's like a really sort of smoky, um, grey toned one, which I wasn't going to use either. So I really wanted to try this one because I love the mid-tones and I do think these purples and the reds can really complement a look. But I don't think for me personally, this is a really good standalone palette. Um, I think if you are really, really into all matte looks, even though these do have a bit of a shimmer, I feel like the shimmer is there to just to make the shadow apply a bit smoother. It's not actually to give a shimmery effect on the eye. So even though this is not an all matte palette, it sort of like uh, works like an all matte palette. I do think the quality of this is very nice. Um, I, I sort of, in my head, I think I compare it to Pat McGrath mattes. So if you've been watching my reviews for a long time and you've seen my Pat McGrath reviews, you're probably thinking, Kat, you always say that Pat McGrath is, you know, too expensive and sort of overhyped. And I, I agree with that. But if you actually watch my reviews as well, I always feel like the best performing eyeshadows in the palettes are the mattes for me personally. I think they pick up really nicely. They apply really nicely. They, they almost blend themselves and they give the right amount of pigmentation that you can apply a sheer amount or build it up. And that's what these do. So I think that these are that sort of higher quality matte. When it comes to Pat McGrath, I think the shimmers let Pat McGrath down. But that's what I sort of compare this to. Now, is this sort of a palette for everyone? No, it is far too expensive. I think it's 54 US dollars and I cringe that I bought that. I'm like, what were you doing, Kat? Um, I, I think I can, if I keep this out, it's going to be something that I can really reach for with shimmery eyeshadows. Like if you've got a favorite sort of single shimmery eyeshadow, whether it's champagne or whether it's bronze or whether it's gold, uh, this is sort of the palette that I would reach for to complete the look. But on its own, it creates a very, very smoky, dark look, which... I don't like to wear on a daily basis, but I do think the quality is nice. I think if you bought this and you love the colors, you wouldn't be disappointed, but I do feel like it is very expensive. Now, I think another mistake that I made was trying to use all the four shades. I think these, even though you can use all four shades, I think these would be better if you sort of like paired the browns or, you know, the brown and the red or the purple and the red. I feel like less is probably more with these because they are so similar in the color tone that they can sort of muddy together really quickly. Now, of course, I sort of demonstrated them putting them on separately and then layered them a lot just to adjust the look. So um, mine got a lot more muddled than probably most people's would, but I would definitely reach for this if I was going for say like a, I don't know, like a cranberry eye, I would, you know, put that down in the crease, blend it out with that, off you go. So I do think that this is very usable, but it is, uh, and it's very, very sleek. I really like the packaging. Now I did see a few reviews of people complaining about the size of this because it is tiny, but at the same time you do get 8.5 grams of product. So because there's no pans dividing it and a lot of wasted space, you actually do get a lot of product in here. And if you compare it to something like, I don't know, the Naked palette or something, I think that's like 12 grams or roughly something like that. So um, this actually does contain quite a lot of product and it's only great if you like the shades. All right, onto the Lid Luster. I don't mind this, but I don't think it's worth the money. Again, I think this is like 30, four dollars or something um i sort of was ex expecting this to feel a lot more luxe than it does it is made out of glass down the bottom and it's like got this black glass sort of uh base but the lid is just printed plastic so it feels a little bit cheap mine has an imperfection where um there must have been a dot on the packaging um before it was painted and then it sort of rubbed off and it's left with like a little fleck on there i don't know if you can see um but it feels really light and sort of cheap uh this reminds me of when people first try hourglass for the first time and they go oh the packaging looks metal but they feel it and it's painted plastic i sort of feel the same vibe with this the lux like element isn't there i think the product is nice um i think it reminds me a lot of those l'oreal 
sort of press pigment things. Um, so they're not new on the market. These have been around for a while. It picks up nicely. It does apply nicely. But I think this particular color, mink, um, is a lot more cool toned and gray than it appears on the website. I was expecting this to be a lot more bronze and a lot more warm and something I can wear every day. But as it is, it's sort of like a brown base with a like a cool tone like shimmer to it um, and it makes things look very very dramatic and very uh I, I don't know smoky so for me this isn't as wearable daily wearable as I was expecting but the quality is nice like the product is nice but the packaging has sort of left let me down a little bit I was just expecting something a little bit more luxe for the price. I think my favorite thing is the eyeliner. This is also not cheap. I think it's like 24 US dollars. Um, but I do know, I have spent a bit of money on eyeliners in the past and they last you years and years and years. And the quality of this one is beautiful. It like applies itself. It's so creamy. I'll have to update in the description box or pin a comment saying how well it wears on my waterline because that is always a test for me because I tend to wear pencil liners mainly on my waterline. But it applied so smoothly on the waterline. When I sort of dotted it underneath and blended it out with a brush, it just created the most beautiful effect and blended seamlessly. So I think this by far is my favorite thing. You do also get a sharpener with it, which um, is helpful, but also... I would prefer it without the sharpener for a bit less money. So um, this is something I would repurchase and I would buy more shades. So I'd be tempted to buy the bronze. I was umming and ahhing about buying that one instead of this burgundy color. Um, and I would definitely, if I was placing an order in the future, I would buy that. And if I expanded the range, I'd buy more shades because this is really, really beautiful. Um, I sort of wish I bought the bronze pencil instead of the pot because the pot just didn't live up to my expectations. The color was a lot different than what I was expecting based on swatches and based on images on the website. So for me, um, yeah, it's something that I sort of regret buying. When it comes to the eyeshadow palette, time will tell um, how I feel about this. I think on first impressions, it does perform very nicely. It does feel nice. The packaging is really beautiful. This would make such a nice gift for someone who likes sort of like basic nude eyeshadows, but they like something really luxe and they just want one eyeshadow palette and use it till the very end. Um, like if you get a, like use out of this until it's gone, it's totally worth the money. Um, but if it just sits in a corner and gathers dust, it's not. So um, I'm gonna have to leave it out and really see how much I incorporate these into my daily looks. So that's my first impressions of the Victoria Beckham Beauty eye products. Um, I'm not disappointed in this range, but I'm not super, I don't think I've spent my money super wisely, if that makes sense. So I think time will tell how much I use these, but the quality is quite nice. I think the eye pencil is great, but I'd love to know if you've tried them, what do you think um, and what interests you the most from her range? So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.